Chapter 3.8 Sticking Together Our Need Will Be the Real Creator Plato Reference 60 Chapter 3.8.1 Hidden Abounded Prosperity Trap Once we understand the strategic dynamics of primordial economics, we can further appreciate the behavior we observe in both nature and society. Organisms of all shapes and sizes appear to be devoted to the task of solving the survivor's dilemma and becoming increasingly prosperous by mastering their ability to project power. However, the path to infinite prosperity is not straightforward. Life has no way of knowing what combination of power projection tactics it needs, nor in what sequence to develop them. This leads to self-induced reversions, unexpected side effects, and innumerable setbacks. Lacking the ability to predict the future or comprehend the complex emergent properties of its environment, life appears to favor trial and error. It simply rolls the dice repeatedly until it lands on something that works. Like fight and fire with fire, life adapts to its randomly changing environment by randomly changing itself, aka evolving. No matter how much prosperity margin it enjoys, life doesn't seem to be inclined to stop searching for better power projection functionality. The threat of predation and an increasingly CCCH environment, congested, contested, competitive, and hostile, ensures organisms stay motivated to keep building and testing new features to help them continually minimize their BCRA. With the survivor's dilemma fresh in our minds, let's turn back to the example of our bacteria predators, bacterial predators. For nearly 2 billion years, life existed as a murderous and fratricidal soup of single cell organisms. Under the stress of their environment, bacteria invented different power projection tactics until they eventually stumbled upon a way to mitigate one of life's biggest exogenous threats, the relentless bombardment of radiation from the sun. As a means of defense, biologist Henry Gee writes, some bacteria evolved pigments to absorb these harmful rays. Once their energy had been absorbed, it could be put to work. Cyanobacteria used it to drive chemical reactions. Some of these fused carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms together to create sugars and starch. This is the process we call photosynthesis. Harm had become harvest. Reference 48. Earth is the only known planet where fire exists. Astronomers have not discovered another planet with enough oxygen in its atmosphere to catch fire. If they did, this would be a revolutionary discovery because it would represent a telltale sign of life on another planet. The ability to effectively feed on solar energy and poop out oxygen was no doubt a major evolutionary step for life on Earth. But like many new innovations, photosynthesis did not initially look like a success story. Why is poop so funny? The oxygen ex exhaust produced by photosynthesis was devastated to the local environment because of its tendency to catch fire. For bacteria born into a world without oxygen, getting covered with oxygen was like getting covered with napalm. The discovery of photosynthesis literally backfired on life, causing the first of many mass extinctions in Earth's history, as generation upon generation of living things were burned alive. Reference 48. Existing as nothing but a murderous, fratricidal, and burning soup of single-cell organisms, the state of life around 2 billion years ago could be described as a bounded prosperity trap. The author defines a bounded prosperity trap as a situation where the inability to sufficiently grow CA causes an organism to be unable to grow their prosperity margin any further, and they become trapped within either a fixed or shrinking margin of prosperity. 
Having a bounded prosperity margin means an organism can no longer grow its resource abundance without automatically causing its prosperity margin to shrink to the point of being devoured by the local CCCH environment. Bounded prosperity traps show that when organisms hit a ceiling on their ability to project power, it translates directly to a degradation in prosperity. The ability to countervail entropy is severely degraded or halted altogether and progress plateaus. Life plateaued at the single cellular level as it struggled to overcome its CCCH environment. It hit a barrier on its ability to scale its power projection capacity to lower BCRA and countervail entropy. Fortunately, as Plato observed, life needs are its creator. The modern form of this expression is necessity is the mother of invention. Life's needs are its creator. What do you need? Through continuous iteration, life managed to find the power projection tactics it needed to overcome this plateau and escape its bounded prosperity trap. Among those innovations was another one of the most effective power projection tactics ever discovered, cooperation. There we go. Chapter 3.8.2, Projecting More Power by Summon It Together. Before diving into a technical discussion about cooperation, it's important to note that 2 billion years ago, organisms had neither eyes nor brains. They had no capacity to see or understand what they were doing at any conceptually meaningful level, because as far as we can tell, both sight and foresight require multiple cells to form a brain. This means early cooperation was an unconscious phenomenon. Bacteria weren't consciously aware of what they were doing or what impact it would have. Organisms didn't decide to stick together because of their desire for a better future. As best as we can tell, bacteria are incapable of understanding abstract concepts like the future. Cells didn't wake up and decide to turn off their predatory nature and begin cooperating because they suddenly felt bad about billions of years of murder and fratricide. They didn't start cooperating because they believed teamwork or interdependence could lead to a greater good for a single cell kind, single celled kind. On the contrary, the reasons why cells first started sticking together was because they were literally stuck together. Early cooperation appears to have taken two primary forms, co colonization and clustering. Colonization occurs when naturally when there is limited volume available for life to occupy. When a group of indi individual organisms occupy the same space, e.g. the surface of a rock, they inadvertently form a colony. As each organism acts in their own self-interest to defend their individual access to their space, they mutually reinforce each other at a holistic level. Forming a single cohesive colony which sums their collective power together to impose physical costs on external organisms seeking access to that same space. Reference 48. This phenomenon explains why one of the most common forms of attacking nature is a colonization attack. Individual organisms simply act in their own self-interest to capture a small piece of territory for themselves and defend their access to it. They don't need to be intentionally working together or conscious of what's happening to execute this strategy. They just need to have aligned self-interests. At larger scales, a colonization attack is sometimes called invasion. An invasive species is one that colonizes a given territory, and colonization can happen either intentionally or unintentionally. The undisputed masters of colonization attacks on Earth are the serial invaders we now call plants. Powered by photosynthesis, plants have abundant watts available to devote themselves to mastering colonization attacks. This power projection tactic has worked quite well for them, as flora now represents 80% of Earth's biomass. Dwarf and bacteria is 15%. Remaining organisms, to include all animals, reptiles, birds, fish, etc., only represent a measly 5% of Earth's biomass. Reference 61. The second example of cellular cooperation is clustering. Mutations in small bacteria cells called 
Archaeon, which several scientists argue was spurred by the sudden onset trauma of photosynthesis and the resulting great oxidation extinction event, empowered them to form Velcro-like tendrils, tendrils that physically capture neighboring cells by sticking to them and entrapping them under a common membrane. It's important to emphasize that Archeon did not bargain with neighboring cells, engage in diplomacy with them, or draft treaties. They captured their neighbors by force, the same way all living creatures capture all physical resources. Archeon became dependent on neighboring cells for nutrients, so they learned how to entrap their neighbors with sticky tendrils to secure access to those nutrients. The fact that the relationships they formed were symbiotic doesn't negate the fact that this evolution succeeded because one organism developed a power projection technology to physically overpower and entrap the other organism. At larger scales, clustering organisms via entrapment and forcing them to work together is given a different name, conquering. As we will be discussing in the next chapter, the undisputed masters of clustering attacks on Earth are the serial conquerors we now call sapiens. Reference 48. Chapter 3.8.3. Cooperation is first and foremost a physical power projection tactic. As previously discussed, pressurized membranes like cellular walls are highly effective power projection tools capable of exerting physical power to capture nutrient-rich volumes of space from the surrounding environment. Sorry, I didn't understand. As previously discussed, pressurized membranes like cellular walls are highly effective power projection tools capable of exerting physical power to capture nutrient-rich volumes of space from the surrounding environment. Entrapped under the protection of a common pressurized membrane formed by archaeon tendrils, semi-symbiotic cells experienced a step function increase in their ability to impose severe physical costs on their neighbors, and thus enjoyed a step function increase in their prosperity margin. This enabled them to form booming interdependent economies that produce vast amounts of resource abundance in virtually the exact same way as what had occurred 2 billion years prior when subcellular particles found themselves in a similar situation under the protection of cellular membranes. These colonies of clustered cells grew in- increasingly more interdependent and reliant on each other for vital nutrients, materials, and gene swapping. The passing of data gene swapping. Anyway, they were able to form highly complex structures, self-assembling into increasingly more specialized workforces, trading various organic goods and services, and becoming ever more efficient, productive, and resource abundant. Through this special combination of robust membrane power projection, security, and high-functioning internal economy, life was able to follow a multi-step biological path towards ever-increasing structure until it managed to self-assemble into complex, massive-scale economies we now call multicellular life. Reference 48. The takeaway. Cooperation is a physical power projection tactic that emerged unconsciously. Useful first and foremost for its ability to help organisms survive longer by summoning their CA together to decrease their BCRA and buy them more prosperity margin. Multicellular life and its remarkable levels of interdependence can be described by the byproduct of organisms simply having to occupy the same space or by inventing power projection tactics to physically capture and entrap their neighbors. By entrapping neighboring organisms for their nutrients, Archeon inadvertently discovered how to tap into their neighbor's physical power projection capacity to buy themselves more prosperity margin for comparatively little effort. The emergence of cooperation is quite remarkable when you stop to think about it under the lens of primordial economics. It is such a deceptively simple and effective power projection strategy that it's hard to believe it took nearly 2 billion years of life to begin mastering it at the cellular level although clearly life mastered cooperation at the subcellular level much easier. To increase CA, simply sum it together to increase your BCRA, more than you could ever do alone. 
tap into your neighbor's exogenous supply of physical power. This strategy doesn't even require thinking. Brainless organisms cooperate at a systemic level by merely, merely by occupying the same volume, colonization, or by being involuntary and or unconsciously enveloped by the same membrane, clustering. Either way, these organisms achieve something remarkable. They increase their ability to impose physical prohibitive costs on attackers with little additional expenditure of watts, and they escape the bounded prosperity trap. Like much of our biological history, the emergence of cooperation is an ironic story and quite relevant to our own lives and personal, personal experiences. Is it relevant to your personal experience? By constantly fighting against each other and then literally having a fire lit under them, single-celled life escaped their bounded prosperity trap by evolving new cooperation tactics. The corresponding drop in BCRA gave cooperative cells abundant prosperity margin to work with. Not only were they empowered to develop thicker, stronger membranes that could survive against oxygen napalm, multicellular organisms were also able to grow their resource abundance to new and unexplored heights by simply sticking together. Organisms started solving the survivor's dilemma by using option number three without even being conscious of it. Chapter 3.8.4 Cooperate or Die Survival Dynamics. There's always a bigger fish. Jedi Master Hui Jun Jin. Star Wars, reference 62. Just like how the emergence of phagocytosis, i.e. cell eating, represented a dual-use power projecting tactic, which sparked predation and the innovate or die survival dynamic observed in nature, so too did the emergence of cooperation. Sticking together is a dual-use power projection tactic which influences both sides of the BCRA equation. Cooperation can be used to grow resource abundance or can be used to increase capacity to impose physical prohibitive costs on neighbors. Cooperation therefore introduces its own cooperate or die shelling point where the emergence of cooperation begets the need for more cooperation. We have established that the survivor's dilemma gives organisms a strategic imperative to grow CA as fast as possible. They can grow CA individually by discovering innovative new ways to impose higher physically prohibitive costs on attackers all on their own, but this requires them to spend their own watts. Alternatively, organisms can grow CA without having to spend their own watts, simply by learning how to cooperate with neighbors and sum their CA together as if they were a single cohesive organism. In both cases, organisms execute the option number three strategy, where they grow CA first to buy themselves enough prosperity margin to grow BA without the threat of raising their BCRA to hazardous levels, to the hazardous level, enabling them to increase resource abundance and survive in a Contested, congested, competitive, hostile environment filled with predators and entropy. These dynamics can be illustrated in bowtie notation as shown in figure 19 below. Power projection and survival strategy. Illustration of the Grossier first, Grobier second survival strategy using bowtie notation. Now let's consider a multi-step scenario where 12 different organisms with different BCRA levels live together within a highly CCCH environment. Let's call the scenario the bigger fish scenario and illustrate in a bow tie notation using figure 20. Figure 20, step one of bigger fish scenario. Different BCRA ratios, we have established that organisms with high BCRA levels are likely to be devoured by hungry neighbors. This means we can expect organisms number two, number nine, and number 12 will not survive in this CCCH environment. So we can go ahead and cross them out in step two, as shown in figure 21. Eaten, eaten, and eaten. Now let's say organisms 1, 5, and 6 start cooperating to form a multicellular organism named alpha. 
At the same time, organisms 7, 8, and 9 are compelled to start cooperating to form a multicellular organism named Bravo. This is illustrated in figure 22. Now we have a situation where the environment has changed to become substantially more hazardous for the remaining three organisms which didn't get the memo on survival and have done nothing to increase their CA by learning how to cooperate with each other. The emergence of cooperation has driven the hazardous BCRA level for this environment down substantially since multicellular organisms now have much larger CA together than they did individually. Therefore, they have more ability to project power to capture resources than their non-cooperative neighbors. Now, organisms like number 10 are in much greater danger even though their BCRA didn't change. Organism number 10 is now the most attractive target of opportunity in this environment, therefore the most likely to get devoured. This is illustrated in figure 23. The bigger fish scenario illustrates how keeping one's BCRA fixed is not enough for survival when operating in increasingly CCCH environments. There are major, major existential and strategic benefits to grow in CA that shouldn't be discredited, even if the organism has no intent to actually use them. The emergence of cooperation only accelerates the benefit of growing CA. The top survivors in this scenario were the ones who learned to cooperate. Now take this dynamic and scale it up from 12 organisms to more bacteria on Earth than there are stars in the universe. At this scale, the benefits of cooperation become unfathomably complex and blossom into the world of multicellular organisms we see around us today. Cooperation started its own ecological arms race by giving rise to self-reinforcing feedback to a self-reinforcing feedback loop where the discovery of increasingly more effective cooperation tactics begets the need for increasingly more effective cooperation tactics. If your murderous and fratricidal neighbors figure out how to cooperate at scale, then you better figure out an equal or better form of cooperation, or else you could become their dinner. It might not be feasible for you to grow your own CA by 100 times to fend off an army of 100 cooperating cells on your own, but it is feasible for you to raise your own army of 100 cells. Cooperation is therefore a strategic imperative because of the survivor's dilemma. Reference 22. What does this cooperate or die dynamic dynamic do for life at the systemic level. The same thing predation does for life at the systemic level. The emergence of cooperation and its adoption by predators makes life exceedingly more compelled to innovate better cooperation tactics to countervail threats and to buy more prosperity margin. This in turn makes life better equipped to survive its environment and to countervail entropy. Organisms which emerge from the fray as champions of survival in a world full of multicellular predatory armies are the most fit and the most cooperative.